Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. I recently received a message from a viewer named at Mr. 3745. They said they were curious about the Blackstone oil analysis I received after they watched the extracting an oil sample for testing video. Now I know that video came out three months ago, but in that time, Tracy and I were at anchor. I took the oil sample uh, while we were in the Bahamas and I've stored it ever since. Once we got back to the United States, I sent it off to Blackstone and I finally have received the oil analysis. Um, at Mr. 3745 asked whether there was anything notable in the report. And I do wanna talk about that a little bit. And part of that is talking about how important trend data is and then how important the uh, universal averages are when you don't have any trend data. I wanna talk about the upper limits of wear metals. I wanna talk about the properties of the oil. And then I wanna talk about the comments that Blackstone puts on your reports. And I mentioned that in the original video and I think it's super important and that's why I use Blackstone. So I wanna talk about all that and we'll start in one second. I mentioned how important tread data is, and this report shows four different oil samples compared side by side. This goes back to 2019 and goes all the way to uh, April 18th of this year, uh, 2023. And you can see in that time, I've put on 1,200 hours. We used to put on a lot more hours on the six kilowatt, but since we switched to the lithium iron phosphate batteries, we've been using the 12 kilowatt a lot more. And that'll be important uh, as we go further into this. Let's take a second and talk about the trend data and why it's so important. All engines will have different oil analysis reports. And that's even true for engines that are the exact same make and model in similar boats. The reason this varies is people use different oils, they are loaded differently, they're in different environment, they're sucking in different air. All these different things will affect how your oil analysis comes back. The important thing is that it's consistent. If you look at potassium here, you can see that it's been very, very, very consistent. And that's the kind of thing you want to see with your oil analysis. And that's why trend data is so super important. One of the main reasons that we do oil analysis aboard Chicory is because of predictive maintenance. And what I mean by that is if you start to see changes in the oil analysis and you can't explain that because of changes in the way you've started running the engine or environmental changes, then that can predict that something's happening. And if you can change or modify the engine before something bad happens, you might be able to save a ton of money. So this whole idea of predictive maintenance is a very, very powerful tool and oil analysis plays an important role in that. Now that I showed you the potassium that was dead uh, even, now I'm going to show you the iron, which you can see went from 39 to 49 to 57. And this was a concern of mine because uh, it was on the rise. And this is exactly the kind of thing that you want to do oil analysis for, is to see trends where things are starting to be on the rise because those things are concerning. Now in this particular case, I knew that I started changing how I ran the six kilowatt generator because of the lithium. We were loading it differently and running it in different circumstances. So I expected a little bit of a change, but I was still concerned about this. I'm gonna switch gears here for a second and talk about the Blackstone Laboratory's comments and how much I value them because in situations like this, when I see rising iron levels, I'm concerned. And we're gonna go through their comments and uh, see what they said about it on each of these reports. So on my November 30th report, which was the second uh, oil analysis I received, they said, Michael, there's more iron in the sample than there was in the first one from the generator, but not so much that we'd suspect a problem involving excess steel wear. In terms of ports per million per hour, this iron level still compares pretty well to the universal averages for the engine type. Remember, those are based on about 105 hours of oil use. The other wear metals read very low and the oil's physical properties tested how they should. Just check back to see how the iron trends. So you can see uh, this helped calm me down a little bit. Then again, on the July 2nd report from 2022, it went up another um, almost 10 points to 57. 
Once again, the comments read, Michael, this generator isn't developing any, any obvious problems. Iron continues to increase, but it's not excessive, and it's probably just a result of normal accumulation over a longer run. Aluminum ticked up too, but we're not worried about it showing an issue with it reading just one part per million away from the averages. No contamination was detected, all told a fine report for this generator. So once again, even though it's going up, their comments really helped uh, get me more comfortable with the readings. Finally, this last report, you can see that it went down to 56, so it actually dropped one from the previous. And their comments were, Michael, nice results. Wear metals are trending favorably, so it isn't any reason to think trouble is in the works. Fuel, water, and coolant contamination stayed away, and low insoluble showed the oil filter is doing a great job. Keep taking great care of this generator. It's in great shape and at 34.92 total hours. So obviously that final uh, comment from them uh, made me feel very, very comfortable about the iron levels. And once again, I knew that I was running the generator differently over that period of time, so I expected something. But having them and their expertise analyze this is really a, a great thing for me. You saw in the comments that they talked about the oil properties, and that's at the bottom of the report. And you can see that um, they talk about flashpoint fuel percentage, antifreeze percentage, water insolubles. All of those have a values that they should be, and you can keep track of that. And that's um, very valuable information as well. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the value of a single oil analysis report. Now, these properties, if they're way out of whack, that's certainly going to tell you something. But as far as the wear metals, that is a little bit misleading because there's a lot of things that can be very peculiar about an engine and not necessarily mean it's a bad thing. That being said, there are some standard guidelines on what the wear metal should be. I put this list together of uh, engine wear metals and kind of what the should not exceed level is. Now, once again, these need to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, if you're doing an oil analysis uh, on a boat you're thinking about purchasing, which I would definitely suggest, I would even go further as to say you should uh, have the gear oil and maybe even the coolant and definitely the oil and the generators, everything tested. Uh, it's inexpensive insurance just to see if something's really whacked out. Uh, but that being said, uh, just to give you an idea of what are the ranges, um, iron should not exceed 100 parts per million, copper shouldn't be above 25, lead above 25, aluminum above 15, chromium above 15. Now, molybdenum uh, is in some greases, and that could kind of leach into uh, the engine if you have some grease that's been introduced, but typically it should not uh, exceed trace amounts, and then tin. Uh, is 15 parts per million. A lot of this stuff is um, specific to, like the aluminum is piston, iron is in steel for bearings, tin is definitely in bearings, lead is in bearings. Um, all of this stuff can tell a technician what's going on inside the engine. Once again, each engine's different, so knowing how old the oil is, what the change interval has been, have they added any makeup oil, how the engines run, the make, model, all of that stuff is super important because these numbers are sort of for a marine engine, but marine engines vary a lot, and these numbers should not be taken as gospel. I hope you enjoyed the video on this uh, Blackstone oil analysis report and learned a little bit. With that, I'm going to end the video, and thank you again for viewing, commenting, liking, and subscribing. Until next week, thanks.